Hey, econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. Now, at this point in microeconomics unit three, you've already learned about diminishing marginal returns, the different types of costs, and all the cost curves. But now it's time to add in revenue and talk about profit. Nope, not that profit, this type of profit. The best way to explain this stuff is with an example. So let's assume that Kevin starts a business selling ice cream cones. Ice cream. Good ice cream. He has fixed costs like the cost for his business license and the cart, and he has variable costs like the cost of ingredients and cones. The business license was $100, the used cart was $500, and the ingredients in the cone cost him 50 cents per ice cream cone. And let's assume he sold 500 cones for $2 each. So with just this information, how much profit is he earning? Seriously, stop the video and do the calculation. Do you know how to make ice cream? No. It's $600 for the fixed cost, plus another 50 cents for each one of the 500 cones, so that's $250, so a total of $850 total cost. His total revenue is just the price times the quantity, so $2 times 500 for $1,000 total revenue. And of course, profit is total revenue minus total cost, so $1,000 minus $850 is $150 profit, not bad. But wait, there's a problem. What about all the time he spent making and selling the ice cream cones? He could have spent that time earning money by working for someone else or working on his other business making chili. Point here is the costs we've looked at so far just include his explicit costs, his out-of-pocket costs for running a business. They don't include other things you need for making decisions like his opportunity cost, his implicit costs. So let's add in his opportunity costs, which is the value of his time and energy, the foregone income, and the money he could have earned by putting the money into Tesla stock instead of buying the ice cream cart. In other words, the total dollar value of what he could have done with his money and his time. So let's assume that the total value of what he could have been doing with his time and his money comes out to $500. And when we go back and recalculate profit, he didn't make $150, he actually made a loss of $350. What? This example shows you the difference between accountants and economists. Accountants just look at the explicit costs of running a business. So Kevin's total revenue minus just his explicit costs is his accounting profit. On the other hand, economists factor in explicit costs and implicit costs, the opportunity cost of your decision. So in this case, Kevin's economic profit is negative $350. He's actually losing money when you factor in his opportunity cost. In real life, calculating your implicit cost is more complicated because it's subjective. What's the dollar value of the time you could have spent with your family instead of running your business? Hey, sorry guys, I'm videotaping. You can't bounce right now. I'm sorry. Please? I only need to videotape for like 20 more minutes. But even though they're hard to calculate, implicit costs should still be factored in when you're making decisions. And that's why from now on in this class, if you see a cost, it includes both explicit and implicit costs. So if you see a question that says the total cost is $2,000, inside there is both explicit and implicit costs. Which means if the total revenue is also $2,000, then the total economic profit would be zero, but the accounting profit would be positive. But wait, how much would the accounting profit actually be? You don't know and you don't care because you're not in the accounting class, you're in economics. Unless your teacher or professor is asking you questions about how to calculate explicit and implicit costs, you're never gonna be asked to calculate accounting profit. But there's one more big idea here that I have to mention. Notice that making no economic profit is not a bad thing. If the total cost, including implicit cost, is $2,000 and the total revenue is $2,000, you make no economic profit but you are making accounting profit. This means you're making enough money to cover all of your explicit costs and have money left over that covers your opportunity costs, which is great. Does that make sense? Now to help you remember Kevin and the different types of profit, accounting and economic, I'm gonna put this on my wall. That's right an ice cream cart. But don't go anywhere, there's still two things we have to do. Number one, if you like my videos, you are going to love the Ultimate Review Packet. It includes tons of practice and exclusive videos, and if you need help getting an A in your class and rocking the AP exam or your final exam, you wanna get the packet. And number two, it's time for a pop quiz. No, 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 no! The questions won't be on the screen for very long, so make sure to pause the video, do your best, and look at the first comment below for the answer key. And while you're down in the comments, let me know what you think of this video and if you like the beard or if you think I should get rid of it. Thanks for watching. Until next time.